Okay, so I'm continuing on with the startup of the auxiliary systems. Uh, so if we take a look, just I have my diesel generator running. Um, seems to be stable. I've got cooling water. Uh, if I switch over uh, to my air compression system, uh, I'm on my way. Um, what I've done is I stopped it from overfilling. I got as far as I need it. Um, and I switched it over to remote. So uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it over to automatic controls and eventually do the same with the rest of the air compressors. Um, so where that is, is uh, if I go to the home screen, uh, it's not listed on here anymore. Um, but if I push page down, uh, what I can get to is page 102, which is the pump compressor control. So emergency air compressor. Uh, and I'm going to set him into auto mode. And as we can see, it just triggered to automatically start. So this guy has automatically, through remote, decided that it needs to turn itself on. And it is now going to fill up and eventually turn itself off when it is appropriate. Um, so at this point, I've got a few tasks that I could do. Um, I could start working at getting my other air compressors up and running. Um, in the event that this guy failed, uh, I would need to rely on some of my other air compressors to start up my diesel generators. Uh, so that might be a good idea to work at. Um, in order to get started on that, I'm going to need to make sure that I have cooling water. My other important compressor is down on page 60, 60 um, where I have pathways of cooling water as well that are required. This guy is important because it allows a lot of the valves that automatically operate the control valves to function. So uh, once I get this going with some other electricity, uh, I'm able to get um, a little bit better in terms of control on the plant. So uh, let me get working at my cooling water system. So if I go to number 10, um, what I can see is I've got two different sides to this. I've got a high temperature freshwater system, which is really the main engine recirculation loop. And then I have a low temperature freshwater, which is really the cooling for um, various components. So things like um, some of the lube oil systems, um, but the one important one is my air compressors. So I'm going to set up a pathway here. This guy, he's going to come through. And the pathway that he takes is going to be up and through. He's going to go through one of the coolers. And he's going to come down. Now I want to make sure, because he's coming through this control valve, that I open up this alternate pathway. So if the control valve decides to close off that I don't restrict my flow. Um, I can't get them into auto really just yet because I don't have any function with that until I have my service air system going. So I'm going to leave it alone for now. And then uh, I get down to a number of, of valves or uh, pumps here. Um, I try to turn them on. It doesn't appear that any of them are working. Uh, I have an electrical issue with them. I haven't turned anything on yet. So I'm going to go and activate power to pumps 1, 2, and auxiliary, and then I'll be able to use any of them that I would like. So I do that through main switchboard. Let's start at number 71. Um, we didn't check it before, but this guy didn't have power until we had our diesel generator connect it. So now that we have, um, we have power. And Things that I have power to that are going to be useful to me. Main LTFW pump 1 and 2. Uh, main seawater pump 1 and 2. Um, those guys are pretty good. Up here I have some ventilation fans. Um, so I can get some positive airflow through the engine room. Um, we've got um, fuel oil systems. Uh, we don't need those just yet. Main lube oil pumps, camshaft, these are all sort of main engine components. Um, but down here I've got some air compressors. Um, 
fire pumps, fuel oil transfer pumps. Don't need. We got our boiler um, uh, equipment, which we'll cover in a little bit. Um, also over here, what I have is uh, again another panel. Um, for the most part, uh, most of this stuff are auxiliaries that we're going to use um, later on. And I think at this point, um, we don't need anything that's that's on. Uh, so let's go to our fresh water system. And uh, now that we have these pumps active, um, we should be able to turn them on. Now these guys, uh, if it's not in L and R uh, in the right mode, local or remote, uh, it won't let you start. So right now I'm local and I can activate them here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch them over to remote and just like we had on that page four, pumping compressor control, I'm going to switch these guys over to auto. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing over here at number one. Um, I'm going to switch these guys to remote control turn off my auxiliary pump and I'm going to turn these guys into auto mode and confirm that they're going to turn themselves off and we do have a pump that's on. Um, I have a couple of issues still on this page. Um, one is that even though I have flow going through here um, or I don't have flow going through here, uh, I guess. You can see these negatives, uh, zeros. Um, realistically, I don't have any flow. If I look at my air compressor system, it looks like it should be functioning, um, but it's not. Uh, as we learned, my issue sometimes lies on other pages, so I've got a few pathways here for cooling water. Um, in addition, on my service air system, I've got another pathway for cooling water. If I look now, uh, what I have is some flow through this system. Uh, my other issue that I have still is that I've set up this side of the heat exchanger, but I don't have this side set up yet, so I need to open up a pathway here. So I've got cooling water going through this heat exchanger, cooling water through this guy. Alarm that came up. Uh, again, a low temperature in that system. Um, again, as we're starting up, uh, a lot of these systems wake up and I don't have uh, I don't have um, levels where I need to be. Uh, this guy, his issue was that he was too cold. Right? So I was thinking he's too cold. Right now what I'm doing is sending most of my cooling, my water through the cooling pathway. Um, set this to auto and eventually it'll fix itself. Uh, however, uh, I don't have any control there. So this valve is essentially dead at this point. My service air system, uh, so my service air compressor is here. If I follow through my pathway, um, comes through, I've got two stage compression, intercooler, after cooler, and then a pathway to get to my receiver, and then a pathway after that into the general control air line. Um, I'm just going to start it remotely, or sorry, locally. Air compressor is on, and we can see that my pressure is rising. I've got cooling water, so I think this system is working pretty good. Uh, I'm going to switch this guy over to remote so that I don't have to be in charge of the on-off operation. Uh, and so by switching to remote, again to 102, and my service air compressor is here, and I will switch them into auto mode. 
Uh, I'll do the same with my start air compressors one and two. So I've got cooling water to each of these uh, following through the pathway again, dual stage, intercool, after cool. And uh, why don't we start start air one receiver and we'll start filling that guy up. So uh, switch him to local to make sure he's running. It appears that my pressure is starting to rise in that tank. Um, I'll do the same with this guy, so we'll make sure this guy's running as well. It appears that he is functioning. Um, so I'm happy with how they're working. I'm going to switch them to remote and switch these guys into auto mode as well. So at this point, uh, if we just summarize our systems, I have my cooling water system, my main seawater system set up. I am s supplying cooling water to my diesel generator as well as my fresh water system. My freshwater system is functioning. I have flow that's that's uh, moving through. It is cooling my air compressors. I've got freshwater cooler as well as an alternate pathway and a control system that's now functioning for that system. My air compressors, uh, I have my two main start air compressors that are starting to fill up this tank and eventually I'll fill up the other tank. I have my emergency compressor that's now off because it has filled up the emergency start. My service air system is charged and providing air pressure to my control air line. My service air compressor is off right now. Uh, but it's remote controlled, so the control system has decided that it's okay how it's sitting and it is off. My electric power plant, uh, again I have one diesel generator that's supplying power to run all those devices. Um, my emergency generator is on uh, still. I could eventually switch it out if I would like to. Um, I can switch in my breaker which will affect my emergency bus bar and I can switch this guy to auto so he will automatically shut down. One of the issues that happens right when I switch over the electrical supply there is that anything that was on in the emergency switchboard might be affected as I turn on and off that that supply. So a couple things that were affected by the emergency switchboard were um, auxiliary seawater pump I don't believe I'm using anymore, um, diesel generator, lube oil priming pump, preheating. Uh, again, I'm not so sure that they're going to be affected, but we're just going to double check that those systems weren't, weren't affected. So I'm going to come back here. Um, auxiliary isn't required. I still have cooling water system. Start air system looks like it's okay. And the other thing that I want to make sure is that since I'm relying pretty heavily on my auto controls, that they are, in fact, still functioning, and it looks like they are. So I think at this point, I have some pretty stable auxiliary systems in place. Uh, I have electrical supply. I have um, air supply. My controls should be functioning. Uh, and so at this point, what I can move on to uh, would be to start up my steam generation plant, the controls associated with it, and the combustion associated with it.